Okay, in today's video, we are going to be going over another example problem talking about induced voltage and calculating the induced voltage. And this is the situation that we have. We have this metal bar, which is sitting on top of these metal railings, which have this resistor connected to them. And we're going to have a circuit through this bar and those metal railings. There's a distance across 15 centimeters. We have a magnetic field in here, that's five Teslas. We have a resistor, that's five ohms. And we are going to pull this bar across through this magnetic field, starting at two centimeters and moving to 12 centimeters at one centimeter a second. So it's gonna take us 10 seconds to do that. And we want to know what is the induced voltage or when will there be an induced voltage when we move that bar across and through that magnetic field. And we want to remember, now this is an important point that you should always remember, that you should always keep in mind, that a voltage will be induced in a coil. And in a sense here, we have a coil of wire right here, single loop, and a voltage will be induced in that coil when the magnetic flux through the coil changes over time. So we're gonna move the bar like that across that magnetic field, and we wanna know when will the flux be changing, and therefore, when will there be a voltage induced? And in this video, we're going to try to answer the first four of these six questions. So this is part one. We're going to calculate the change in the magnetic flux from zero to 10 seconds as we move from two centimeters to 12 centimeters at one centimeter a second. We're going to graph the change in the magnetic flux. We're going to calculate the induced EMF. Then we're going to graph the induced EMF, and we're going to do one through four in this video, and then in the next video, so we don't rush through this one, then we'll determine the magnitude and the direction of the induced current, and we'll determine the force needed to move the bar to the right through that magnetic field. So this is one through four. Part two will be numbers five and six. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the change in the magnetic flux from zero to 10 seconds, and that means if we want to know the change, we want to know the initial, and then we also want to know the final. So this is the initial magnetic flux, and this is the I'm going to calculate the final magnetic flux. It's simply the area of the coil, the initial area, times the magnetic field strength. Now the magnetic field strength doesn't change, but the area is going to change. Now oftentimes you see this with cosine theta next to it, but the magnetic field and the face of the coil, the plane of the coil, are right angles. So the line that is perpendicular to the face of the coil and the magnetic field the angle between those two is zero, and the cosine of theta, um, which is the cosine of zero, will be one in that case. We just have to multiply the area times the magnetic field. So the initial area, it's not zero because we're starting here at two centimeters. So this is two centimeters, 0 0.2 meters, convert everything to meters, times the length, which is 15 centimeters, 0 0.15 meters times the magnetic field, so it gives us an initial um, magnetic flux of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 Webers. Now then we're going to move the bar from 2 centimeters to 12 centimeters and we want to calculate now the final magnetic flux. Now you might think that the length now, the, the, the width here across here, the, or the length across here, this length is still 15 centimeters, but you might think that this length is 12, but the magnetic field stops here at 9. So it's going to be actually 9 centimeters, so that's 0 0.09 meters times the same 15, 0 0.15 meters times the same magnetic field strength, and that gives us a final magnetic flux of 6.75 times 10 to the minus 2 Webers. Okay, it's only this portion that has the magnetic field in it, so that's the only part that we count for the area for the magnetic field. Okay, now we want to know the difference or the change. It's just the final minus the initial. So if we subtract those two values, then we get that the change in the magnetic flux is 5.25 times 10 to the minus 2 Webers. Okay, now we want to graph that change, and we're going to do that on this graph. And you can see I set up the zero time. Okay, we're going to graph the change over time. We start here, so this is time equals zero at two centimeters. And when we move the bar across, we have an initial magnetic flux of 1.5. So I'm just gonna put a dot there, approximately 1.5 times 10 to the minus two Webers. And then as we move across, 
the magnetic flux in that coil changes until we get to nine. I'm just stopping it there for a second. And then we'll move on, and then the magnetic flux doesn't change. Okay? So we have an increase from zero seconds to seven seconds, and then for the last one, two, three seconds, it doesn't change. So you want to be thinking maybe a little bit ahead of time, okay, we have a change. In order to have an induced voltage, we have to have the magnetic flux has to be changing. So there's only going to be an induced voltage for the first seven seconds, and then there's going to be no induced voltage for the last three, okay? Which we'll get to in the next slide, because in the next slide, we're going to now, we're going to calculate the actual um, induced voltage from zero to 10 seconds. Okay, now this is the equation we use. This is Faraday's law, and we have a single coil of wire. This is the change in the magnetic flux, which we calculated at the previous slide, and this is the time. Now the change in the magnetic flux was uh, 5.25 uh, 5 times 10 to the minus two Weber's. And we have a minus sign here. Don't forget the minus sign. This is Lenz's law, which we'll talk about in the next video or so. But uh, remember, you keep the minus sign here. And um, the time, now you want to remember, the time is not 10 or 12 or something like that. The magnetic flux is only chain or nine. The magnetic flux is only changing for those first seven seconds. So that means the time is going to be seven seconds. You kind of want to be aware of that. We go from two to nine at one centimeter a second. That's seven seconds. Okay, that means the induced voltage is minus 7.5 times 10 to the minus three volts. Okay, now that's one way we can calculate the, calculate the induced voltage. I'm going to show you another way. Okay, I think it's interesting also. And uh, we should get the exact same answer. So we're going to calculate, starting with the same equation. Say we're just going to use the same equation, Faraday's law, to calculate the induced EMF, the induced voltage. But we know that the magnetic flux, we calculate the magnetic flux as the change in the area times the magnetic field strength. Now, if you don't remember what magnetic flux is, you can link to my video in the upper right-hand corner. This one explains to you what magnetic flux is, all right? And then also divided by the time still, okay? So this is the magnetic flux. Now, this is as we did in the previous, in the very first slide or so. This is how we calculate it. It's the area of the coil times the magnetic field strength. But we can expand this and we can rearrange this equation, the top, this term up in the top here, because we know the area is the length times the width. Now the magnetic field strength doesn't change, so I just put B and B. Now this L is this L right here, this length. Now that's not changing, but what is changing is the distance in the x-axis here. And that changes over time. Now I move the time over here because this is the change in the x over time, or the change in the position over time. And if you remember from another topic in physics, the change in the position over time, or the distance divided by the time, is simply the velocity. So I can rearrange, I can rewrite this as the velocity, and then would be the velocity of the bar. So here we have our same equa similar equation, which we rewrote. The induced EMF is minus, don't forget the minus sign, B is the same B. This is L. Now, in the textbooks, you, are, you often don't see the L written as a capital L. You see it written as a lowercase L, so I just replaced this. But this L is the same as this L, the length of the bar, times the velocity, okay, which we got from the distance divided by the time, or the change in position divided by the time. So all we have to do now is calculate, uh, multiply those three terms together, minus 5 Teslas, the length 0 0.15 meters, and then the speed, or the velocity of the bar, in meters per second, one centimeter, 0 0.01 meters per second, and you get that um, the voltage is the same answer, minus 7.5 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, now you'll notice that in this case, we didn't actually have to know the change in the flux. We just had to know magnetic field strength, the length, and the velocity. So you can, depending on what you're given, you can calculate the, the induced voltage two different ways there. Okay, now we're going to graph that. Now, this is the change. And once again, it only changes for the first seven seconds. So we start here at minus 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, the induced voltage is a constant voltage. Okay, the flux is changing, and the, that change in flux produces um, a constant induced voltage because the flux is changing at a constant rate. All right, then once we get out of the magnetic field, okay, after second, second, seven seconds, then the voltage or the induced voltage goes back to zero. 
So this is generally going to be a horizontal straight line, and we get out, it goes right back to zero like that. Okay? Okay, so um, now one thing, one last thing, I think it's good to kind of just compare those two, those two graphs that we produce. I think it gives you kind of a better, a little bit more of a visual understanding. So here we have, this is our um, magnetic flux, and this is our induced voltage, and once again, for the first seven seconds, as we move through the magnetic field, we move the bar through the magnetic field, you can see the magnetic flux changes. And if the flux is changing, there's an induced voltage. Well, after the first seven seconds, there still is a flux. I'm not saying there's no flux, but the flux not changing. And when the flux doesn't change, then there's no induced voltage. Remember, in order to have an induced voltage, you have to have a changing flux through the coil. Okay, there you go. Um, we did. We answered the first four questions. Uh, we talked about the changing magnetic flux. We graphed that. We talked about the calculating the induced voltage, and then we graphed that also. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. You should subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget about part two, and we will see you in the next video, which will uh, probably be part two.